Hello, everyone. Today, I would like to revisit the subject matter of neural networks once again. There was already a video on the channel. However, this question is intriguing to me, and I am still working on finding the answer. I have discovered several additional fascinating approaches, and my intention is to share these findings with you today. And I would appreciate receiving feedback. Please write in the comments section if you are interested in videos about neural networks or if I should solely focus on animation in Spine software for my future content creation. So first, there are cases when we need to increase the resolution of textures or other images, for example, for promotional materials. Or there are cases when the source files have low resolution. In general, our objective is to enhance the quality of the original image. I will demonstrate how to achieve this using stable diffusion. To make it more interesting, I chose to capture a photo of my friend Vadim. Nice to meet you. Here's a portion of the zoomed-in photo. To clarify, this is the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which was Apple's flagship at that time. Assess this simply unbelievable and absolutely stunning picture quality. I am stating this in quotation marks, obviously. So, we upload the image to Stable Diffusion platform and commence experimenting with the different settings and configurations available. The first parameter is the multiplication factor. You can adjust it on this slider or control it using this slider. Enter the value manually here. I decided not to change it because... This impacts the processing speed. Well, in Photoshop we have already enlarged the image to 640 by 640. And for this test it is quite enough. These two sliders are algorithms used for enlarging. For instance, when I set the first slider to its maximum value, I obtain a face that looks like this. To compare, at this point I will adjust the second slider, and the resulting outcome will be significantly different. These algorithms can be combined, which will give us a third option. The last scale is responsible for the weight of the second algorithm. In this section, we have a total of nine methods of increase. You can choose either one or two methods at the same time, and combine them on this scale, which will also have an impact on the final result. Therefore, through experimentation and learning from mistakes, we are able to attain the outcome we desire. Here is the final image that I obtained, and here is the source code, along with the render closer. In my opinion, as far as I remember Vadim, the similarity to the original here is 90% for sure. And when I showed him this generation, he noted that even the eye color turned out to be correct. I'm not sure if it's a coincidence or if this neural network somehow discovered this green shade in this chaotic situation. In my opinion, the result is fantastic. Do you remember the movie Blade Runner from 1982? Look, four decades have elapsed and we possess the technologies showcased in this film available to the general public. And once again, here is the source code and here is the 2000 by 2000 pixel render. The face has undergone a growth of over 20 times, and this is not the limit. The benefit of this technique is that the image, the number of times it can be increased is significant, and it has a fairly decent appearance. The disadvantage is that you still need to personally know someone in order to achieve a greater level of similarity between individuals. And there is no universal setting that would fit for each case without exceptions. And now let's attempt to make the task more complex. I discovered another photograph in which the focus is blurred. Let us get closer. This is Vitalik. You can congratulate him. He got married six months ago. But it's not quite clear what he's doing here. But our goal is not him, but this guy. His name is Zenya. And our goal is to enlarge and make his face clearer. I cut him out of this photo, and the source turned out to be very tiny. Only 45 by 46 pixels. Moreover, the image is terribly blurred, so the task turned out to be extremely difficult. Let's observe what we can acquire from this material. Regrettably, no miracle transpired, but here is the final result of my diligent efforts and perseverance. I employed these settings. For the purpose of comparison, here is an authentic photograph depicting Genia. You can judge for yourself about the similarity. Personally, knowing him, I can say that, well, of course, the hair is not the same. The ear disappeared. 
but the facial features are somehow traceable, especially on this little preview, extremely similar. And do not forget that the source was of very low quality. Therefore, in my opinion, the result turned out quite well. Naturally, if you take a relatively clear picture where a person is recognizable from the beginning, then almost any settings will give a good result. Please take note of what occurred to this particular detail. The glasses have been exquisitely depicted, and the previously blurred text is now legible. Furthermore, even the strands of hair on the temples can be observed, following the contour of the image. What can I say? Many paid apps are inferior, and here I will remind you that stable diffusion is absolutely free neural network and pay attention. This is a tenfold increase. Here are the dimensions, 107 by 165 pixels and 1080 by 1664 pixels. The same approach can be utilized to enhance the textures in our animations. I will demonstrate examples. Aladdin, pay attention to the patterns, small details and decor on the frame. The scaling was flawless. Observe the cheetah. Notice how much clearer and more defined it appeared. And this is an increase of eight times. The same is true for the girl. Face, hand, hair remain unchanged. Well, everything turned out great. In terms of dynamics and animation, it will look even better. That is all the information I wanted to share about scaling. And now for those who create concept art and character sketches. Here is a brief overview of what you need to know. Six years ago, I took part in the Wheel Breaker project and my role was all the art. These are backgrounds, user interface, character design and animation for them. It was a demonstration version in order to attract publishers. A great deal of time was spent on searching for ideas and inventing characters. Observe how simple it is at this moment to generate a concept for this particular kind of game. Here's a screenshot. For instance, we require an additional hero. This is a knight wielding a spear and allow him to be in a heroic position. By utilizing the mouse in Photoshop, it merely takes a minute to generate such a drawing and transmit it to stable diffusion for further processing. We are looking for a suitable model on the website cvtie.com. In this case, we need a knight in a fantasy style. In the model section, during the search, we enter the keyword knight and visually select the option that best suits our preferences and requirements. As an illustration, this knight is not bad. Download and place the file in the Stable Diffusion Models folder located within the directory. Select this model and begin generating. These are the settings that I utilized for this purpose. It took approximately 10 minutes to create different versions. These are some of the versions that I especially liked and found appealing. I agree that working with such references is significantly more convenient and you obtain a more creative and innovative source of inspiration. You can further develop these ideas on your tablet. If you are unable to draw at all, you can utilize a photograph as a reference. Let me utilize Genia's image once more. Presently, he will be the protagonist of this video. We removed him, and to enhance the dramatic impact, I will include an enormous hammer in his hands. There will be an extremely powerful and massive knight specifically designed for handling serious tasks. You can see for yourself how everything is happening. I haven't changed the settings. The rendering speed may vary for you. On my configuration, everything works fairly quickly. Ultimately, this is what I obtained. I preferred these three choices to a greater extent because they possess a visual similarity to the original version I had. Observe the impressive stylization of the badge, transformed into an ancient amulet, and the shirt, cleverly crafted into a chainmail jacket. In my opinion, it turned out perfectly. It turned out to be such a medieval IT specialist. Even the pants have managed to retain their slim shape all over. And here, I genuinely like the way sneakers have transformed into steel boots. And this choice of the head, it ended up being very similar. Look, just like Zene from a previous life. Here are more options in various styles. Here I increase the value of denoising strange. From this, visual similarity is lost, but pose is preserved. There is also an interesting solution. Allow me to demonstrate how I stylized the characters I created half a decade ago. 
By the way, these animations had frightening limitations. You were unable to use meshes, constraints, paths, or any other elements. Only movement, rotation, and scaling were permitted. I positioned my initial sketches at the start, and subsequently, the iterations followed. Now, with the utilization of artificial intelligence, I firmly believe that the ultimate outcome would be greatly enhanced in terms of style and intrigue. In principle, I am satisfied with the images I've created, but check the level of detail in the costumes the neural network offers. Seeing them, I realize that I lack experience in terms of clothing decoration. I seldom do this, and such a visual would greatly assist me during that period of time. And it operates in all areas. Neural networks now open up new possibilities for us in the realm of creativity. It's not always possible to find what you need on the internet. And here we get specific variations of images that are difficult to come up with on our own. And based on them, we can come up with something even more unique. That is probably all there is to know about the sketches. The ultimate point I wanted to mention is the GPT chat. The paid version of it has received a multitude of fascinating updates in the past few months. The initial step is the capability to upload and generate an image. Why do we require this functionality? I can provide three examples of how to utilize this function. An example of the first one is searching for ideas for animation. And I just upload an image to the GPT chat, provide a brief description of what I require. This is the style of animation, duration, and some other nuances. You can read my request yourself. And in the initial version, the neural network generates this concept. The character touches the magic lamp, and with each rub, his attire transforms into a shinier and more luxurious one. That is a brilliant idea. And mind you, I did not disclose to the chat that this character is Aladdin, and it really is him. So the neural network visually recognized who is in front of it based on some details, and she suggested a good option for animation. In the same way, it works with other images. It is possible that you may not visually catch some important element, and the chat will help find these non-obvious details and give you some idea or insight into them. This is the first example. The second is the generation of additional elements based on our image. We frequently need to include objects in the animation, like clocks, coins, and a hand positioned in the desired pose. Much time is spent on their creation, especially hands. All neural networks perform badly on this task. But here, ChatGPT with built-in daily generates more or less high-quality images of hands if compared to competitors. I chose a tough task, generate hands for heroes in various poses. It's extremely challenging, but definitely achievable. My preference is for the characters to demonstrate the heart gesture. Please take a look at how the GPT chat system handled this particular task. This was specifically made for the film Aladdin. Here are the various options for the character Zlatovlaska. And the ultimate character is a gypsy. I genuinely admire the manner in which these ethnic motifs were captured. The hands were stylized, reflecting this culture. It'd be hard for me to create something like this on my own. But in general, my advice regarding hand angles is to quickly take a photo of your hand in the desired position and stylize it in stable diffusion. But let's get back to the GPT chat. The third example of how you can use the image generation function is to create images based on your sketches. Examine the night from the prior example and the outcomes obtained based on it. Certainly stable diffusion will handle better and more accurately, but these choices will also be beneficial for someone. Is there anything else I need to mention about generating images using GPT chat? Currently, the integrated DALI outperforms other competitors in text processing, among various other tasks. I was unable to achieve such accuracy in relation to the text when using other neural networks. Yes, there are errors here as well, but finding the correct word in other neural networks is the most challenging task. However, I am disappointed by the constant restrictions. They are related to content policy, 
This applies even to the most innocent things. For example, to get the word platica, I had to ask to write platica without the letter R at the end. Or another instance. I made an effort to generate a picture of a cheetah in Alaska, featuring the word platica written on the snow. This is also not possible because, as you can see, cheetahs do not reside or exist in the state of Alaska. I had to devise the idea that it snowed in Africa in order to circumvent these restrictions. And what I really liked is that the chat has opened the possibility to use the internet in its responses. For instance, when I desired to include a video insert into this tutorial, wherein the image in the film is magnified and clarity is enhanced, I couldn't recall any movie in which I had witnessed it. Not only did the chat suggest movie titles to me, but it also accurately indicated the timing of where it happens. Try to locate this information on Google. I'm certain it will take much more time. That's all I wanted to say. And that's it for today. Thank you all for your attention and cooperation.